Hey everyone, Amy Bowser Tennant here, the Genealogy Reporter, and it is Family Story Friday. I am excited to bring this story back to you. I actually blogged about it some time ago, uh, several years ago now, but I had yet to talk about it on the YouTube channel, so here we are. Um, this is a story about finding a treasure while remodeling a home. I have lived in numerous homes where remodeling has been happening, and I have yet to find a treasure of my own, but my friend Nathan had a great find. He was recently, um, at, well, let me rephrase that. He, this was some time ago. He had been remodeling his kitchen living room area, and he tore down a wall and found two old, old letters. They were dated. One was dated from 1862 and the other one was from 1875. So he put these on Facebook and of course I saw them and was ecstatic. Oh my goodness, somebody found letters in their wall. Like the walls are talking, right? And plus I'd always dreamt of finding some little trinket or something hidden in a floorboard or a wall or, or something, you know, and even in the ground, I would have been fine finding it on the barn lot. But he was kind enough to share his letters with me and give me a digital image of them. And after reading them, I, of course, had to do some more genealogy research on the Bree Count family. That's the family that we're going to be talking about. This family was the Bree Count family who lived in Miami County, Ohio, back in the as early as the 1850s. And these two young men were their sons that had written back home to them. And the first letter was from their son, Edward. Now, Edward uh, was currently serving as a Civil War soldier. And I think that's really neat because um, a lot of our ancestors did fight in the Civil War. And that was a very difficult trying time. A lot of experiences were had um, in that war as they are in any war. And so having something, uh, a letter from one of the soldiers while he is there, a firsthand account of what's happening was was really neat. He begins his letters, Dear Parents, I shall attempt to write you a few lines this evening. I'm almost afraid I will overshock you with these letters. I thought, oh my goodness, it would have been so awesome to have all the letters that Edward had ever written home. Uh, it seemed like to me that he was probably writing weekly if he could, um, just by some little things that he said. And one of the things I found while reading these letters was the fact that you know, my ancestors, they did not keep journals or diaries. I have a couple of instances where they were interviewed for newspapers and that was my introduction to them. I always talk about the fact that <clears throat> if you don't want someone else to introduce you to your descendants, then you need to introduce yourself to them. And you do that in with diaries and journals and letter writing and, and so forth. So I kind of got to know Edward by this next paragraph. I'm going to read this to you. He says, of the prisoners that had recently come to their camp, I think it is too cold for the bare-feeted and cotton-clad. They are poorly clothed, those that have fallen into our hands. While we have the best of uniforms and the great trouble is more than we can carry, I have three shirts. They are wool. Two pair of pants, one jacket, one blouse, one dress coat, one overcoat, two pair of drawers, two pairs of socks, and two blankets. I think that is a load for any man of 160 pounds, end quote. And that just says a little bit about Edward it's, and his character. Um, he really comes, I, I can just feel that he feels for those that are less fortunate. And that says a lot of his character, his upbringing and, and so forth. And then of course, I think he has a little bit of a sense of humor when he says that uh, that's a pretty heavy load for any man of 160 pounds. So I got a kick, kick out of that. After doing some more research on the Breakout family, I found that Edward, um, sadly he died 
just eight months after this letter was sent to his parents. On the 12th of July, 1863, in Jackson, Mississippi, he passed away. I don't know how he died. Um, he There had been a skirmish in Jackson, Mississippi in, I believe it was towards the end of May of 1863. So I don't know if maybe he was injured then and then um, died just then shortly after in July, or if you know he took sick or some other accident happened, but he did not return home to his family, unfortunately. Um, in his letter, he also talks about some land that he had in Kansas, which I thought was interesting because his brother, the other letter is from his brother, Charles, who was living in Minnesota. So we have one brother talking about his land in Kansas and this other one writing from Minnesota. And I felt like, wow, these boys, you know, they must have really had that thirst to go west. Um, and they must have. All right. The next letter was from his brother, Charles, and it was dated January 17th, 1875. And he's living in Alexandria, Minnesota. The heading said that, Alexandria, Minnesota. I thought that was interesting because uh, when I was taught to do letters in friendly letters, you know, um, in school, I didn't write down where I was writing from. Kind of wish I would have done that now. Anyway, he talks about the fact that he is a minister and his congregation is really growing. He has a great love for his people and he even shares with his mom and dad that I think the people have a great love for me too. And that was interesting. You know, here he is saying these um, things about himself but not in a prideful way. It was really humble the way he talked about it. And he's also going to school and talking about how he's um, studying to be a teacher and how well that that's going, that he's getting top marks. And then he talks towards the end about going home. He says, I don't know about coming home soon. I am almost afraid to go for fear it would be harder for me to stay here contented. I feel that coming here was providential. And then he tells us why it was providential. He has some good news. He said, I expect to be married the 1st of April to a good Christian girl. She will be 17 then. She weighs 129 and a half and is about the height and shape of Alice Schidler. I gotta stop there. About fell over when I read that. I'm like, who does that? <laughs> who writes home and says, right down to the half pound, how much somebody weighs? But I'm guessing he meant that to reflect the fact that um, his soon-to-be wife was a very healthy woman. Anyway, he goes on to say, she looks commanding like her, meaning like Alice. She is of a very good family from New York, light-complected, brown, curly hair. At first, I did not love her much, but on acquaintance, she would develop new traits of character, and since our engagement, it seems she is in my thoughts almost all the time. Oh, isn't that sweet? I thought that was sweet. Um, I thought it was just absolutely hilarious that he never mentions her name in the letter. So, of course, I had to do a little digging, found out that he married Elizabeth. And Elizabeth and he lived their life uh, out in Minnesota. They had five children. So they never did return to Ohio, at least not to live, but I'm hoping that they made it out at least for a visit to old mom and pa. This has been really fun uh, sharing these letters with you. Even though this wasn't from Nathan's family, um, he and I, even other people in the community, really enjoyed reading these letters. Do you have any letters from your ancestors? Or have you ever found a treasure in the home you were remodeling? I'd like to hear about it. Leave me a comment. Thanks for joining me today on Family Story Friday. I hope you come back. Please subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you. Come back on Tuesdays for Genealogy Tip Tuesday and Thursday for Genealogy Thoughts Thursday. Thanks and have a great week. Bye-bye.